Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today I'm going to show you how I made this card which is called a concertina pocket fold. Um, I saw this card on Pinterest several times and I've been looking for a video for it and I just couldn't find one so I thought well I'll just go for it anyway. And then one final look and I did find somebody's video and it was made by somebody who goes by the name of Maria's Crafting Corner. I'll put a link to Maria's video in the box below. Um, she obviously went through the same process that I did. She saw it, she liked it and was looking for a video. And there wasn't one until she made one. Unfortunately it was quite recently that Maria made hers but I was so far advanced within the time I'd spent looking for this and trying to sort it out. I didn't really have time to go back again. Um, but hopefully it will help by those of you that do go over to Maria's video and have a look, so um, that'll be a big help for her. Um, so this is my prototype card and what happens is you open up and inside it's a pocket fold, so you've got the bookmarks in there and it's a little um, like concertina card as well. These measurements of Maria's are for American sizes my real card is this one. It's not finished off because I know who this card is for and I need to do something for the front which includes his name and 80 because that's his birthday. Um, but I have made a few changes with measurements and uh, where bit, different bits line up and such like, although this is more or less the same as Maria's card. Um, again, I've got my little bookmarks. I want to find um, some verses from Bi the Bible to put in there um, for my friend, he'll appreciate that. So I am going to do exactly the same as this. I'm changing the colour scheme and the uh, cardstock, which is car the colour scheme, and also the designer series paper. Now to posting this, as you can see, it is a little book and they fit in here beautifully and this is one of our craft gift boxes it comes flat pack and you just undo these take these little covers off and it finishes up like a little pizza box okay so the card will fit in like that and this actually fits in better than the American size does so I'm not going to give American um, inches because this is good for letter size cardstock users as well. Um, it's too wide to get out of um, A4 cardstock so we have to turn out sideways. One of your pieces you would have to but the other will be wide enough for you. But it's a bigger card um, so I'm going to stick with that. As I say I will put Maria's measurements um, link to her video in the box below so that you can go and get the her measurements if you want. Um, I will put the inches measurements in the box below and I'll also do conversions to get the metric measurements as well. When I have eventually finished this card I will show it on my blog um, so you can see exactly what I've done with it. So let's cut, start off with the card pieces that we're going to be needing. First of all, you need a piece of crumb cake which measures eight and three quarter inches by five and three quarter inches. Another piece of crumb cake which measures eight and a half inches by five and three quarter inches. I've marked a little cross on there, and yes, I think you can see it. And that tells me that this is my smaller piece. And the concertina piece, now this is quite a bit smaller than um, Maria's. This is two and a quarter inches by ten and a half inches. And then I'm doing my middle layers in early espresso and I want four for my main card and these should measure three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches and you need two more for the smaller card on the inside which we need to cut at an angle and these should measure three and three quarter inches by five and a half inches so they are just an eighth of an inch smaller than those ones. One eighth of an inch, okay. 
and then you need some designer series paper now I talk about design 1, 2 and 3 the front is design 1 the inside is design 2 and that's design 3 so for this one I have design 1 design 2 these are from Abigail Rose and these should measure three and three quarter inches by five and three eighths inches and then you need two for the other two pieces of early espresso and these should measure three and five eighths inches by five and three eighths inches then you need two oh you need six pieces of the middle layers for the uh, concertina and these should measure two inches by one and a half inches and then you also need two pieces of design two, two pieces of design three and two pieces of very vanilla for sentiments to go on to and all of those should measure one and seven eighths inches by one and three eighths inches and you also need the bookmarks two pieces of crumb cake which measure five inches by two inches two pieces of design one and they measure four and one eighth inches by one and three quarter inches with all four corners rounded and then you need two pieces of very vanilla and this should be die cut using the deckled rectangle dies die number five start counting from the inside smaller the die smaller the number so you get up to number five you want two of these one for the back one for the front um, the one at the back will be great for somebody to write their sentiment on um, and if you don't have those dies the rectangle is approximately two and five eighths inches by three and seven eighths inches and I think that is probably it now this is actually take two um, I got right up to doing the last bit when I realised I cut my cut, uh, my design series paper and the middle layers the wrong size so I've had to start again so to start off with we're going to work with the two big pieces of crumb cake and the long strip and we're going to do some scoring on there I'm going to be using my scoreboard as you know it, I have gone back to this being my favourite for scoring and if you take your largest piece put it in horizontal and you need to score this at four and one eighth inches and four and five eighths inches and then the other piece which is the smaller piece you want to score this at four inches and four and a half inches and then your long piece needs to be scored at every one and three quarter inches so that is one and three quarters three and a half five and a quarter seven and eight and three quarters which should leave you one and three quarters left over yep that's good Now all of these need to be folded and burnished beautifully. This one needs to be done mounted, a valley, valley, mountain, valley, mountain. Just make sure they will line up nice and straight as you're burnishing. Just make sure they're all nice and straight. Nothing worse than a wonky card. Okay, so that's that one. And this one, this is our shorter one. So this is where it, the bit that makes it look like the a small book. And then this one as well. So what we need to do is 
First of all, we're going to adhere these pieces on. So this is my design number one, and I must remember this has got a right way and a wrong way. Um, there's Tombow gum, here we go. I hope you've all heard the excellent news that sticking up are going to be opening up in Ireland and in Belgium by the end of the year. We're hoping it's going to be in the last um, quarter, so it could be as early as September. So I'm really excited about that. If you're in Ireland or Belgium and would like to um, shop with me or you'd like to join my team, I have started a list of people who are interested to know more information as and when I have it. Um, please email me your details and I will um, put you on the list. Um, oh, and the inside ones. As I say, this is take two, and this cardstock looks like the wrong size. No, that's okay. Well, as I say, this is take two, and I'm sure that that is wrong, so I'm just going to double check with the right piece that I did. I'm not sure what measurement is wrong. It's eight and three quarters, yep. So maybe it's the top level that I did wrong. That's okay. That's okay. Maybe I scored it in the wrong place. Let me check my scoring. Four and one eighth. No, that looks all right as well. What have I done? I've done the scoring too big. Oh well, never mind. That is wrong. But the measurements I've given you are all correct and that is what you'll finish up with, okay? So I'm going back to my original one now. Um, so once we've done that, we're also going to do these. Um, okay. Now the two sentiments I'm using here, which are the same as I've used in this one. Okay, life is better with friends like you and best wishes. Both of these, they come from Flowers of Friendship, is that one? And Best Wishes is from Artistically Inked. So you just need to adhere these into all of these. And again, I have already done this. So save you having to watch me glue all of these again. That's me gluing again, not you watching again. Okay, what I did was I did it like that. Okay, I finished off like that. Sorry that I'm jumping like this, but I'm very wary that this is a long video. Um, okay, so you'll finish up with something that looks like that. Okay. So now that's as far as I got last time. Then I hit problems. Now what I need to do with this is first of all we need to cut down those two angles. And once I've done that I will remove that. Um, and I suggest you get yourself a pencil that has a really nice sharp point which I seem to have misplaced. Mind you I know where my pencil sharpener is so I can always sharpen another one. Oh that's it, that'll do. Okay, so what we have, these are the pieces that are going to go on there, so that needs to be cut. 
and that is going to be going on that so that also needs to be cut now this really does need to be precise so what we need to do on both sides here we need to measure up at two and a quarter inches now you can see my measurements down here so if I put that on the bottom line make sure that's straight and I am going to mark at two and a quarter I'm going to turn around I need to mark two and a quarter up there so I'm going to start with my paper my cardstock at two and a quarter and then mark the baseline and what we need to do is to cut from there up to that corner there up to that corner okay so let me make sure you can see what I'm doing here I've got the right towards the edge of that score line I don't want to cut the score line off or any of the score line off and I want this pencil mark to come right in the groove there to make sure that one's right in place yep did you move oh, I don't think so okay let's slice that one off yep I think that's gone right to the point so let's do this one that one's in that's in right okay so that looks good okay now we need to do these two pieces and an espresso now that says two and a quarter as well so that's going to be going on there what I suggest you do first just to make sure that you're doing this it's all working out correctly for you because last thing you want is to make the same sort of mess up that I did so what I do is I put this in here now that corner looks as if it's in a really good position there and it looks like I've got the same gap all around here so what I'm going to do is I know that I've got to cut right up into that corner so I'm just doing a diagonal line there and I'm going to do a diagonal line here and that should be two and a quarter inches is that what I've got here let me just double check I'm a little bit paranoid about this now um, having made one mistake so let me just double check so that is that one was two and a quarter I think it should be two and an eighth shouldn't it so let's do two and an eighth let me do mine first just to make sure the reason I'm saying I'll do two and an eighth first is because if it's wrong it's easy to go back to take that extra bit off if I do two and a quarter then that really is not going to work so I need that to go in there that point right into the cut line there make sure it stays there and don't go with your blade straight onto a point like that it will make it buckle so that's good and let me just test this that looks good okay so I've got the same gap all the way around so that's two and one eighth it didn't sound right when I said two and a quarter okay so there's that one so what did I put for this one then uh, design series paper oh that's right I've put two and one sixteenth here 
but again the easiest thing to do is do your pencil mark on here first and then check the measurement okay because now I'm going to have a more narrow gap around here so my point is going up to the top there which is looking good and this one here I want that about an eighth which isn't much of a gap and let me double check that I've got two and one sixteenth that I've got to mark it there well, this is actually gone at two inches I'm going to do it at two and one sixteenth If you're not sure, the 2 and 1 16th is the first pencil mark. I can't really see where I've gone here. Oh, there it is. Okay, so. And of course, the 16th only come in the first place, don't they? Okay, so I'm going to try it there. This is two and one sixteenth. That up to that. When I did my other one, I can't remember going to um, two inches. I've just gone to the point. Silly sound, so I shouldn't do that. Right, now let's see if this was any good. Yes. Hmm. Could do with a bit more, couldn't I? So if I do that two inches then. This is such a precise thing to be doing. Okay, so I'm going to change my instructions to be two inches. Let me do that now before I forget. Where have you gone? There. But I still want you to go up there. I don't want to cut any more off on... Yes, I do, don't I? No, I don't. I just need to cut that from here. So I'm just putting this into the cutting track, but that's not. That's just by the side. Don't do it from that end. Brown wasn't a very sensible colour to choose, actually, was it? Mm. Let's try the other one. Um, what we do if we turn that one over? So what did I say? Two inches, didn't I? and into the corner oops oh that's where it was I wondered where I, the bit went that cut off um, right, that's right in the cutting track that's right in the cutting track Oops, I don't want to cut straight onto the point. Make sure that's still in. Right, what I'm going to do then 
is I am going to move this so that this is OK and OK here. I'm not too worried about this. In fact, I could just cut that bit off, couldn't I? I just cut an eighth off. Because this bit down the bottom here gets covered up. There we go. Because that's where our um, concertina bit comes across, so that's not going to be seen. But that works. Okay. So now let me see if I can get the other one to work. Let's do this first. This one I said to do at two and one eighth. Let's mark it on here. Two and one eighth. There we go. And we go straight up into the corner. I really wished I'd chosen a lighter colour to do here. Okay, so if that's the right side, it would work around there, wouldn't it? So that would be okay on that one. So that was for that. Where's, what did I do with the other one? There it is. That's that one. That's good. Bit panicky there. I thought I was going to have to do the same. Okay, well, I'm going to put. I'm going to use that it's a little bit off, but as I say, that bit there is going to be covered. So as long as I get my top bit lining up. So just to recap, on this one you line up at two and a quarter. The brown one you line up at two and one eighth. And this one you line up at two. So that's an eighth of an inch shorter each time. I really hope I haven't confused you there. Right. Now, I'm going to concentrate on getting this bit correct because the other bit won't be showing. Oh, of course, I remember what I did wrong with that first one when in take one. I forgot to put my ribbon on it. But never mind. Right now, concentrate. There we go. So that one's okay. Because that's going to come across like that. Uh, where's my other one? Right, do the top bit first. That one was really quite good, wasn't it? Oops, I've got some glue there. Okay, so we adhere these onto this bit. Just trying to think ahead, make sure that I'm not um, forgetting anything else. The one that I made yesterday, my the green, no, my prototype, the Blackberry Bliss one, I'd used Tombow to seal these bits down here. And 
this morning when I was having a look at my handiwork, um, it hadn't held. Now I know that I had put thin lines um, thin lines of Tombow on there but I was still surprised that it didn't hold so my second one, the green one, I've used tear and tape and I have to say it does feel a lot more secure I feel a lot, lot happier with it there we go okay so when this comes in it's going to be adhered like that okay so that covers all the uneven bits up so what we need to do now is um, like this is my bad one wasn't it so what you would need to do if this was a good one imagine that was design two this is design one before you adhere that on the outside put your ribbon inside there and then again assume you hadn't put that on there put it inside there so they can tie up here um, I'm just going to have to accept that mine isn't going to have ribbon on it not unless I can come up with another idea or maybe I could adhere it underneath the um, the bits on the front of the card I might be able to do that might not I'm just trying to remember to do these pencil marks. Trouble is, some of them are so faint, I can't remember where I actually did them. I think that one would be covered up. Right, so we are going to be using tear and tape to adhere this down. And I would, for a job like this, I'd really rather have thicker tear and tape. So I'm going to put two lines down. Unfortunately, it's a bit time consuming, but I'll go as quick as I can. Oops. So I'm going to do two lines there. And I'm going to do two lines here as well. Exactly the same on the other side. And I'm also going to use tear and tape to adhere this part of the book inside the main cover part. Inside, uh, where's my good one? No, that's it. So I'm going to put my tape in here. Again, I'm going to do two layers. It means it's overlapping, but that's okay. I love this um, design series paper, Abigail Rose. Really beautiful. They've used, I think it's petal pink as part of the design series paper. I wish they'd used more of it with the flowers. Right, just give that a good flatten down. And these. Now when you undo this, when you overlap, if you do the underneath one first, in fact, I don't, do I do that one first? Then that can push down so that the tape under there is actually sticking to the exposed one. If you do it this one first, quite often the top bit 
folds over on itself. Sometimes you can rescue it, sometimes you can't. Now to put this into position I'm going to stand this up like this and then I am going to stand this up like this. Get the top in first. I'm lifting the bottom up off the table. So I've got a little grip there. And then I'm going to lay that down onto there. Make sure it all lines up. And of course make sure it closes. Okay. So that should be lined up there. Which it isn't particularly. You can put Tombow on the tape to help you with this bit if you like, which I think maybe I should do. By putting the Tombow over, if you've not seen me do this before, it does allow you wiggle room, whereas as you can see the tear and tape will just grab it and will not allow you time to play. But if you're very careful you can pull it off without damaging your cardstock. So let's try this with Tombow. Now don't put it on very thick, it's just enough to cover up the sticky from the tear and tape and therefore allow me to manoeuvre this. There we go, let's try that. with that let's just give it a good press down now got a bit of Tombow escaping from there but that's all right but there we go that's all right now once you get the concertina part in you can't actually do this what I'm doing so make the most of it now if you need to do it so now I'm going to do the side bits here and one bit, uh, one side at a time. Again I will use Tombow. I thought I could get away with it with the centre spine, um, but obviously not. But I would definitely use it on this one. thing is with this the concern is that it's going to make the inner card go a bit wonky when you close. Okay, if you close it over and make sure that everything is lining up nicely here. And then before it gets too much of a grip make sure that you can open it up again as well. Okay. Pulled it over too tight. It should finish up so that you've got a little bit of an overlap there, um, a short fall if you like. Okay, now let's do this side. I've done my um, the inserts in my little pockets as bookmarkers, but you could use um, if you use glue dots, you could put um, a gift card on the bookmark if you like. So really nice card and gift all in one. Okay, 
these in. I'm going to come over and make sure it stays in there. Yep, that's straight and it's got my little overhang there. I'm quite happy with that. There we go, that's good. Let's get rid of this first of all. Then we're going to put our concertina bit in. Um, did I show you the stamp sets? I know I did in the take one, I don't know whether I did with this one. I'll do it if I've done it before, sorry. Um, best wishes is from Artistic Link. I think I did do it, didn't I? And Life is Better with Friends. I've also done the front of what I'm putting on the front of the card and for that I used Happy Birthday and what else did I use? Um, oh. oh, I think it's this one, Wishing You All the Happiness You Can Imagine. We'll find out in a minute when I come around to doing that bit. Now what we're going to do with this is we're going to put glue on the back of here and we are going to line that up with the edge of this one here, okay, the diagonal card. I'm not going to take it any further over than that, so I've still got my gap there, okay. So let's do that bit. Okay, put glue all over there. Line it up to the edge of what I'm calling the inner card. Make sure that it's going straight. Okay, now that's all right. Move this over, and I'm going to do this one. line it up to the edge of this slanted card here. You can't actually see the edge of it, just making sure it's all lining up straight there. Okay. Okay, so that's your card. If you've done it correctly, you'll have a ribbon there to tie it up with. I didn't, so I haven't. <laughs> okay, do you see that's a great idea? I think it's absolutely super. Um, oh, now we need the bookmarks first. And as I say, I just rounded the corners of those two pieces. And these, I'm using a retired punch. Um, which just does that fancy edging for me. And this is actually a tad shorter than two inches so that it fits in there. In fact, if I open this up, it'll be a lot better, won't it? Okay, so there's that. That one, see? I don't know why I've not got rid of this. It was such a good idea. So I do hope you've got one of those. If not, what I would suggest you do is I would round the corners like that, but I would find something that's got uh, something that will punch a little hole like that. I know one of the fancy tags has got a little hole on it because I did it on a previous video. Um, unless you just have book tags without bookmarks, without having um, ribbons going through them. So make sure I put these up the right way because this is the one that's got a design. Right way or wrong way? There you, 
Oh, quick, quick. You didn't round the corners. Again, another retired punch, I'm afraid. This one's only just retired. I've still been using the... Oh, what was it? Um, a little one that we had from years ago. I couldn't find it this evening. Really disappointed. I know that I haven't got rid of it. It was just too useful. Now I might come back and put something on here. Or I might even come back and put another one on the back there. That would look nice, wouldn't it? Well, I'm not going to stop and cut the bits now. But I very well, very well might do that. glue on my finger and everything's sticking to me. I'll right, make sure that's up the right way as well. Now I brought two rolls of ribbon over with me. I wasn't sure what I wanted to use. That one is uh, soft suede from way back when and this one is current I believe and this is Early espresso. But I think I'm going to go for the lighter one. I know it's the wrong colour, but I like it. So I'm just taking a piece that's about that long. Mm, about seven inches. No doubt I'll have to cut a piece off. It's probably far too long. Where's my scissors? Ribbon scissors. Here we are. That one. Let's have two pieces. Now what I do is I fold it in half. Oh, I've been doing it wrong all day. I know what I used to do. I used to fold it so that it's what I call the cancer fold. And then push these two through. Do I go from the back or the front? I think it must be going from... Yeah, it's got to go from the back. Let's do that again. Do the cancer bow fold, then put the two together, bring them through, loop them through the loop, and it gives you a nice tidy loop at the front there. Okay, and with a ribbon like this, I might actually put a glue dot in there so that it holds it closed. lift that up, push that in, that's it. That will stop that ribbon going walkabouts. Crikey, my scissors, my scissors are really blunt. Looks as if I might have to treat myself to a pair unless they can be sharpened. Okay, so we'll do the cancer bow and then that comes in from the back through to the front keep that so it doesn't undo a nice tidy fold from the front let's give it a blue dot Trim the edges off best as we can with these blunt things. That seems to have happened all of a sudden. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to slide these in here. 
Okay. And for the front here, oh, that one's going on the back. And for the front, what I did was, there's the happy birthday and wishing you all the happiness that you can imagine. I'm going to pop that on there. This I fussy cut from a piece of this paper here. The stamp set that goes on with this um, is, uh, it's not that one. I'm sure I bought it over. Cottage Rose. Oh, mm, must have put it away. I know that I did bring it over, um, but I do tend to tidy up as I'm going along and I put a push things away that I really want to keep out. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to pop it up on dimensionals. I was watching something the other day, um, a demonstration, I think it must have been by another demonstrator. Oh, it's probably creative to you now that Stamping Up set up the, um, a couple of Saturdays ago. And she said, I make no apologies for the amount of uh, dimensionals I'm using. And she, her opinion is exactly like mine, that after going to all the trouble of making a nice card, she doesn't want her centre the centre of her card sagging because of uh, lack of dimensionals. There we go. Let's just tip it up so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. In fact, I Oh, I might be able to weave it in there. I've said, didn't I, that I'd put a ribbon through there, through there, so that I can tie it up from here. I'm not going to do it on screen. I will fiddle about with it afterwards so that I can get that done. In fact, on the back, I'm going to make it a bit easier for myself. I do top and bottom. Centre. So I've got a little channel there. Let's use just a couple of smaller ones. There we go. It'd be so much easier to try and line some. In fact, that's not very clever, is it? Because somebody's got to write on that. Oh. Oh, can you pull these off? looks like it. That was because I was too busy thinking about dimensionals rather than what I'm actually trying to achieve here. But then if I don't do this, I can't put my ribbon on. Mm. I just have to rub around the, put the ribbon around over this bit. I'll think of something. Again, I'll share on my blog once I've come up with an idea of what I'm going to do with this. It won't be this weekend, the weekend the video goes live, because for tomorrow and Sunday, Hubby and I are both doing a, uh, we've got a stall at an artisan market in a t local town. So I'm a little bit pushed for time, I suppose. There we go. At least there's a decent place for the greeting. And just as a thought for the box, I would probably put a lining in on the inside. I'd choose one of the papers that I've used, put a lining there. And also do remember that on the backing of this acetate, there is a cover, uh, a little protective covering 
which takes me ages to try and fiddle it off, but um, trust me, it's there. So you can peel that off and that goes really nice and shiny because it looks quite matte at the moment. And there we go. I've started it. Where's my tweezers? Okay, you see that's a sheet there. I'm not going to put it right off until I'm ready to use it. So there we go. That is today's pro project. I hope you like it. Sorry about the confusion about how much the measurements are that you measure up to do the diagonals but for the actual card the crumb cake it was two and a quarter for the brown it was two and an eighth and for the design series paper it was two okay so that was two and a quarter two and an eighth and two okay and if you finish up like mine a bit uneven because it must have been that from that point down to here wasn't absolutely perfect and it does need to be perfect. Um, you can at least fiddle it about at the bottom there because it's not going to be seen. Okay, so there we go. That's today's card. Hope you like it. Hope you give it a try. Um, there's that one and there's that one. And I will bring this one in as well because I'm quite pleased to, with it. It's not my size, I know, but it still turned out nicely, and I like the papers. So, there we go. Many thanks for joining me today. Um, I will put all the measurements in the box below the video, and I will do the conversions to get to metric, and I think the inches are perfectly okay for Americans, especially if um, you use one of these, put your card in because that's quite sturdy I'm going to put one of mine in the post I'm going to post this to see what it's like how it su survives um, and I will again put a note on my blog to say did the card survive um, because obviously once you've got this in you can't fold that bit down all right um, all the products that I've used for this project will be in the box below if you do want to do any shopping with me, first of all, thank you very much. Uh, when you place your order, um, please use the July host code so that when I send out Happy Mail at the end of um, July, I can also send you free product with the handmade thank you card, unsigned, um, that you'll be free to use for yourselves. Um, it'll come with an envelope so it's ready to use. And also a handmade gift as well. Um, just to show my appreciation to you for choosing me as your demonstrator. I really do appreciate your business. So that's it for today. If you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe by clicking on the subscribe button, button there down in the bottom right hand corner. And then click the bell so you get notifications. I look forward to seeing you next week. And in the meantime, please take care, stay safe and of course, happy crafting. Cheerio.